Hi, and welcome to Discover Oklahoma. I'm Lauren Nelson. And I'm Dean O'Lally. Today we're coming to you from the Wells Family Christmas Tree Farm in Norman. And this is much more than just a tree farm. The family that owns and operates this property hopes to create a great holiday experience. Of course, it's home to trees grown from seedlings as well as holiday events, photo backgrounds, and fun activities all season long. We'll take a look around throughout the show. But first, we're going to talk about another outdoor activity that everyone can get involved in. And everyone can do it while social distancing, too. We're going to head to Lake Murray and do a little bit of fishing for smallmouth bass. I've loved fishing my whole life. That's, that's all I want to do. That's all I've ever wanted to do. Marco Vaca has an energetic enthusiasm for fishing. That, in turn, made me even more excited to go fishing for smallmouth bass on beautiful Lake Murray. If you've never caught a smallmouth and you want to do it in Oklahoma, there's no better place than Lake Murray to do it. The fishing is amazing when it comes to the smallmouth. One of the many things I love about doing a story like this, besides the fact I get to go fishing, is what I learn. Like, when you're reeling, and you feel them bite, and you feel them bite, and then you feel it get heavy, just lift your rod up, and just hold it there, and let the rod do all the work. Gotcha, okay. And just keep reeling, don't ever stop reeling. So you, you talked about that uh, smallmouth have a reputation for being rather feisty. Yes. You said they're actually kind of mean. No, they're very, <laughs> very aggressive. Today for bait, we were imitating shad, but you can also use crawdad or worm. So does it come down to the type of lure that you use or bait come down to the season? Yes. The season, uh, that is the one thing that does change on day, day to day. Uh, when it comes to wind, no wind, um, you know, you, you'll go from a moving bait to a not moving bait. It wasn't long after that conversation, the small mouth started moving for us, it seemed. There you go, look at that. That's probably last year's hatch. Uh-huh. It just jumped right there. Very good. I was fascinated to learn all the different conditions under which you can catch smallmouth at Murray. It helps to have a guide as knowledgeable as Marco, of course. He's fished this lake long enough, he knows where all the good spots are. If you run every point on the lake, at one of them points, you're gonna catch some smallmouth. That's almost a guarantee. And today that guarantee worked as my first fish of the day jumped on the hook. There you go, you got him. They could just lift your rod straight up and keep reel as fast as you can. Don't give him no slack. Oh, man. Just swing him in the boat right towards me. How about that? It wasn't long. Oh, I got one. Try for two. Then. I ended up catching one more. Marco caught quite a few as well. Now, I did have some that didn't quite Very hold good. on long enough. Here we go. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh, not again. Oh, oh man. <laughs> did you see him come up and eat it? I did. For the short time we were on the water, I was thrilled to catch as many as we did. Thank you to Marco for a great afternoon, and I enjoyed his philosophy of fishing. Just, it's so peaceful, no stress, nothing matters. It's just you and the bait. And to watch somebody else catch one, whether it's a five-year-old kid or an 80-year-old man, and I've had all of that in my boat, the smile they get, it never gets old. I mean, it's just, there's something about fishing that makes you feel good. If you're ready to fish, check out the Oklahoma Fishing Trail. Head to the website fishinok.com to explore all the great places to cast your line. Of course, fishing can be a year-round sport here in Oklahoma, but I will say it can get a little bit too cold sometime to be out on the water. It can, and if that happens, we have some great ideas for some indoor activities too. Jason Grubbs takes us to check out the newest exhibit at the Gilcrease Museum in Tulsa. Currently on exhibit at the Gilcrease Museum in Tulsa, the art and activism of Shan Gosshorn, along with the work of women she's inspired. When I began to think of a title for the exhibition, the first half came really easy, weaving history into art. The second half, the enduring legacy of Shan Gosshorn, is not only Shan's art, but the influence that she had on other native artists. Gosshorn was born in Cherokee, North Carolina, homeland for the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians. She moved to Tulsa in the early 1980s, working as a photographer and designer. But her beautiful basket weaving didn't come till later in life, 2008. One of the things that's really remarkable about Shan and her work is while she was born in Cherokee, North Carolina, 
she didn't have a mother or grandmother to teach her weaving. It's all self-taught through research and studies, much of it done here through the Gilcrease archives, working right up to her passing in 2018. I've really come to respect Shan as not only an artist, an advocate for Native rights, but also a scholar. Uh, she was serious in her scholarship and her research. Alongside of Goshorn's works are traditional Cherokee baskets from the late 18th and early 19th centuries. So you can see the connections between the past traditional basket designs and weaving and what Shan was doing. Big and small, each one of these baskets is beautiful and unique in its own right. But when you get up close, you can tell that they hold much more than just beauty. Each one has its own message. As they're looking at it, they begin to notice there's text or there's images that she's woven into these works, and those have the message, her advocacy. Misappropriation of cultural imagery, treaties, sovereignty, abuse, concerns for the environment, all of it her activism for Native Americans. Some of her works are in English, others in Cherokee. She's just not a Tulsa treasure, she's a national treasure. The Smithsonian has just purchased her large uh, set of baskets called Resisting the Mission, which deals with the boarding schools. Some of her works dealing with that period in history are here as well, focusing on the forced adoption of English for Native American students. They were prohibited from speaking or writing their native language. It was almost lost, and many native languages have been lost. As you move through the galleries, you'll see how Gosshorn's work influenced others. For additional female artists are exhibited alongside her. This is a show about the power of women, whether the power of their art, the power of their advocacy, the essential role that they have in American culture. All four women are Native American, born in Oklahoma, with international notoriety of their own and inspiring future generations. At the Gilcrease Museum, I'm Jason Grubbs for Discover Oklahoma. The Gilcrease Museum is located at 1400 North Gilcrease Road in Tulsa, and you can see the Shan Goshorn exhibit through March 28th. Visit their website for more information. Coming up on Discover Oklahoma. We've been coming here probably about uh, six, seven years. Talk about an Oklahoma tradition, we're showing you where to get the best locally produced pecans. It's worth the trip even if you're a little far, far away. Load up the car and head to this hot spot. We'll show you why. Signature shakes, the Arbuckle Shake. Plus a chocolate lover's paradise. See what else they're serving up when Discover Oklahoma continues. The Oklahoma Travel Guide's got a fresh new look. It's your one-stop shop for awe-inspiring attractions, iconic Route 66, stunning escapes, and legendary local food. Get your free copy today. Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma, coming to you from the Wells Christmas Tree Farm in Norman, a great place to pick out your natural grown tree or just soak up the holiday spirit. Tree farms are a popular place to be this time of year, and there are lots of great ones just like this one all across Oklahoma. And another type of farm, of course, that people love to visit during the holidays, I'm talking about pecan farms. Right now, Dan Stein is going to show us around Hoffman Pecans in Stillwater. As the leaves begin to turn, the fall time is a busy time out on the Hoffman family farm. All hands on deck when harvest season comes. Dick Hoffman and his wife Jean bought this piece of land on the outskirts of Stillwater in 1962. And today the farm holds 50 acres of orchards lined with about a thousand pecan trees, all with the promise of a fruitful harvest. I love everything about pecan. And he knows everything about them, too. Pecans are kind of considered a holiday nut, and uh, people love them for Thanksgiving and Christmas. There are more than 100 different varieties of pecans. There's only about five or six varieties that we like to sell through our store because the flavor is so good on those varieties that uh, it, it is some of the best tasting pecans mm -hmm. that, that uh, are produced. But it's a year-long process to get that perfect fruit. There's a lot that goes into it. From fertilizing and watering, the family provides constant care. It's a lot of work. And come October, the shaking begins. The shaking machine brings the fruit to the ground in a matter of seconds. Once the pecans are cleaned and dried, they'll go into these two machines that can shell up to 500 pecans per minute. 
which means getting them out to customers even faster. We've been coming here probably about uh, six, seven years. I've never got a bad pecan. It's always good. <laughs> I've always had great luck with the pecans. We do see a, a great influx from year to year in customers, um, not just local, but you know nationwide. We're shipping all over the U.S. now. You can come to the store and buy pecans or bring your pecans in for them to crack. While you're there, grab some other items like candied pecans and pecan oil, or even some Oklahoma made honey. We are supporting each other. That is the main thing. You know, two small businesses that get together to help each other out. They also sell to local bakeries and other businesses. We hear a lot of times it's the best pecans they've ever had, and you know, it really makes us happy to hear that. And he has the awards to prove it. Everything from top grower to a farm family award. There's trees that's, you know, twice my age down here. Once a kid on the farm, Shane Hoffman is among the other grandkids who now help run the farm. Through the years just watching it grow and, and build together as a family, yeah, it's been, been real nice. We have a, quite a bond from that, you know, with uh, the whole family working together. I've been doing this all my life and people say, why are you still doing it? Said, because I love what I do. And his customers love the fruits of his labor. In Stillwater, I'm Deanne Stein for Discover Oklahoma. You can find Hoffman Pecans at 7104 East 32nd Avenue in Stillwater. They're open Monday through Saturday. Pecans are a holiday staple, no doubt. Absolutely, but if it's a quick, sweet treat that you want, well, we can get you fixed up with that because Shelly Mills found a great place. Let's check out Dolce Paradiso. It's in Oklahoma City. I love everything here. <laughs> It's kind of hard to just put it on one thing. Welcome to Dolce Paradiso. This pastry and gelato shop has been here in Southwest Oklahoma City for about a year and a half. They serve up fresh made gelato, sorbetto, cookies, cakes, and so much more. I'm really thankful. I just wanted to say thank you to this community. They welcome us, they are here to support us. Hema Patel is the owner. She also makes the gelato. Patel decided to open Dolce Paradiso after her family felt this part of town was missing a dessert shop where they could come and be together while enjoying a fresh treat and each other's company. Customers like Deborah Hoag say the treats are amazing, but the friendly atmosphere is the icing on the cookies. It's like cheers in a way, only with gelato and desserts. I've been coming here quite a while. I've made it a regular stop every week, if not, if not more. Dolce Paradiso is located here on May Avenue, just south of Southwest 104th Street in Oklahoma City. They also have a new second location in Edmond. Same thing that we offer to South community, we wanted to offer same for the North community as well. Patel says they have many customers that drive from out of town often. We have so many customers, they're regular and they come from Edmond every single weekend. By having a shop in two locations, they hope to make it easier for customers to enjoy these treats without having to drive as far. There really is something for everyone here. Brittany, the pastry chef, is always creating new cookies, cakes, and other desserts. They are also always expanding the menu, adding items for those who are vegan, as well as those on keto and gluten-free diets. They also serve sorbetto, which is dairy-free. Patel doesn't have a culinary background. Rather, she has always been a nurse, a career she is still actively involved in one day a week. She considers Dolce Paradiso her hobby. She spends her time here making gelato and interacting with customers. She says it's a calming place for her. Customers say no matter where you live, you need to go to Dolce. It's worth the trip, even if you're a little far, far away. In Southwest Oklahoma City, Shelly Mills, Discover Oklahoma. Dolce Paradiso is located at 10740 South May in Oklahoma City. They're open Tuesday through Sunday, closed on Mondays. Coming up on Discover Oklahoma. It has a lot of great properties to it, so it's anti-cancerous, it's anti-inflammatory, it has great protein in it. A sweet treat that's good for you, we'll show you where they're serving it up. Kind of a nostalgia take you back, uh, mama pop style restaurant, 50s diner. And a trip back in time for a meal you won't soon forget coming up a little later right here on Discover Oklahoma. Why order a free Oklahoma outdoor guide? Uncover unique wonders. Cultivate your curiosity. And wake up your wild side. Order or download your free copy today. 
Welcome back to the Wells Family Christmas Tree Farm, where we're getting into the holiday spirit. This time of year, it's really easy to go overboard eating all the sweet treats and good food we have around. And I'm right there with you, but if you want to take a break from all those goodies, there are plenty of places where healthy eating tastes very good too. Julie Chen takes us to Acai in Jinx. At Acai, you'll find a healthy helping of breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I come and just try different flavors every day. I love it, it's healthy. This acai bowl restaurant is a labor of love for a husband and wife team, Jason and Trina McGill. Jason actually was the one that said, hey, why don't we open <laughs> one of those acai places? I was like, well, the problem is you, should, you need to say it right if we're gonna have one. <laughs> so I was like, it's acai. And so that's how we came up with the, um, the name acai. Acai specializes in bowls made from the acai berry, a superfood from the Amazon. It has a lot of great properties to it, so it's anti-cancerous, it's anti-inflammatory, it has great protein in it, so it's really an awesome, it's like, a, it's a superfruit. The berry is turned into a thick blend for bowls and specialty smoothies. The ingredients are fresh, some are locally sourced, and others, like the nut butters, are made right here. The entire menu is vegetarian, dairy-free, and free of refined sugar. There are also gluten-free options. They are absolutely delicious. Like, I've never had nothing like it in my life. And it's addicting. There are about a dozen bowls to choose from, or you can create your own. They all have the same basic build. On the bottom, we make our own granola, so it's just oats, agave, and oil. Um, and then we do the acai blend, and then on the top we put fresh fruit, um, local honey, nuts, seeds, really anything on the top that would go well with that. It's like a treat, but it just feels like you're eating good. Everything you eat, you can taste every bit of the fruit, the honey, the oats, I mean all of it. The most popular flavor is the red, white, and blue. It's the basic berry bowl with strawberries, bananas, and blueberries on top. Chocolate and tropical bowls are also big sellers. The crazy for cacao, so that's for like your chocolate lovers. People love that one. Um, Bora Bora for our tropical bowl, so that has um, pineapple and mango and coconut on top. I've tried just about everything. I'm more of a chocolate person, so basically anything that has the chocolate ice in it is, is a done deal for me. Um, the energy bowl is great. That's probably one of my favorites. The nutty cacao, like I said, anything chocolate got my name on it. The Sunshine State because it has all the different fruits in there and I like a variety. The bowls come in three sizes and are great as a meal or snack. Kids love them too. It's great for kids because you can kind of sneak in all of those things that they need and they love it. Acai, food that tastes good and is good for you. It's easy, it's quick, it's good for you and it's fulfilling. Come and try it, it's amazing. Acai has two locations with indoor and outdoor seating. There's this one in Jinx and the original location in Bixby. You'll also find a contactless drive through there. In Jinx, I'm Julie Chin, discovering Oklahoma. Acai is located at 801 East A Street in Jinx. They're open seven days a week and offer curbside pickup too. Check out their website at acai.com for more information. Up next on Discover Oklahoma. Uh, our crisp was our number one seller. They're a potato chip that is actually dipped in the chocolate. And that's just part of it. Check out the diner serving up Bedre chocolate creations. That's next when Discover Oklahoma continues. There are some things you just can't contain. Oklahoma Today magazine is bursting with culture, mind-blowing restaurants, trips, adventures, and so much more. It's the perfect gift for Mother's Day or Father's Day. Give them something truly special, a year's worth of adventure. For only $14.95, Oklahoma Today Magazine, break through the ordinary. We've had a really great time here today, getting into the holiday spirit at the Wells Family Christmas Tree Farm. But before we close things out, of course, we have to share a great place to eat. Let's go to Sulphur and check out the Bedray Cafe. We've been here five years now, and, and the restaurant started up as, when, as the hotel got opened. We're on the, on the ground floor, right across from the street from the visitor center, so when you come the corner from the park, 
you'll see us right there, the Bedrick FA signs right there in your face. So it's kind of a welcoming sign. When this is designed for the hotel, it was going to be an outlet for the chocolate factory. Kind of a nostalgia take you back, uh, mama pop style restaurant, 50s diner. We decided to add sandwiches and, and coffee, and then we just kind of blossomed out from there. We have a, a salad, we have daily specials, soups of the day that's very popular. Come with some specialty items in our chocolate that they make at the factory. Uh, our crisp was our number one seller. They're a potato chip that is actually dipped in the chocolate. Twists, it's like the bugle that's dipped in white chocolate. They're delicious. We've got a, a big selection of desserts. We have cakes and pies. Um, we have a full menu of ice cream items, old-fashioned sundaes, hot fudge sundaes, banana fudge sundaes, hot brownie sundaes, um, shakes. So I'm going to change it up and get the lemon Italian. It is awesome. <laughs> signature shake is the Arbuckle shake, and it is a caramel shake that's uh, topped with whipped cream, and it's drizzled with uh, another more caramel and chocolate pieces. Uh, our meltaways, some of our meltaways. We get our teas from the Tea and Spice Exchange next door. The most popular we have is uh, our chicken salad sandwich. It's a great recipe. It has uh, chopped pecans and cranberries in it. Um, it's, it's a really good chicken salad. Um, our turkey caprese sandwich is probably our, our number two seller. It's an Italian style um, turkey caprese sandwich. Um, and we have a roast beef uh, called the Southern Trails. It's really good. It's got a horseradish cheddar with it. We get our coffee bean from uh, a man in Oklahoma City, and he's kind of getting well known up there. Uh, the name of the company is EOTE. It stands for Ends of the Earth. And he gets his coffee beans from all over the world, and he roasts them himself there at the, his place, at his roastery in Oklahoma City. And I, and I buy them fresh from him. So, um, and we have uh, our our espresso beans from him and our coffee beans and, and um, it's probably the best coffee you'll find in Oklahoma. A big thank you to photojournalist Casey Kennedy for that story. The Bedre Cafe is on the bottom floor of the Artesian Hotel in Sulphur. They're open seven days a week for breakfast, lunch and dinner. And no matter where your next road trip takes you, guess what? The Discover Oklahoma Dining Guide will help you find a very, very good place to eat. All you have to do is just log on to our website, TravelOK.com, to download your version, or you can click Request Free Brochures to get a copy in the mail. A huge thank you to the folks here at the Wells Family Christmas Tree Farm for hosting us this week. You'll find them at 4091 East Franklin Road in Norman. Hit up their website, wellschristmastrees.com, for details on ours. They're also open by appointment for group activities. And if you're still in the market for an Oklahoma-grown Christmas tree, check out the website, okchristmastrees.com. They'll help you find a tree farm near you. Coming up next Saturday on Discover Oklahoma, a New Year's tradition, the first day hikes at Oklahoma State Parks. So until next time, remember, there's always something to discover in Oklahoma.